Hello, and welcome to part seven of my NADN Masterclass series, where I take you, somebody who has no idea what AI agents are or what NADN even is, and turn you into somebody who can actually make sophisticated AI workflows and even sell them to people. Now, it's pretty wild to think we've already knocked out six parts of this Masterclass series, and now we're at the point where we need to start wrapping things up. And as I was creating this lesson, I thought, well, which path do I want to go down, right? Because there's a million different automations or AI agents that I could show you how to build, right? We could go into personal assistance, we could go into lead generation, but what's really the point of this masterclass? Is it to show you a bunch of random examples and have you kind of like pick up some NADN foundational truths along the way? Or is it to give you the baseline skills and eventually the frameworks to build whatever it is you want? And the answer is the latter, right? The point of this masterclass series is to give you the skills and the frameworks to use AI, to use automation, to solve whatever your particular use case is. And I'm never gonna know what that is, only you are. And so what we've actually been doing these last six lessons is giving you the base skills you need to create anything you want, right? There's a certain level of competence you need to create agents and automations, and that's what we've covered so far. And what you're looking at right now is a list of those things we've covered, right? We've done everything from the NADN interface itself, to APIs, to RAG, to external triggers, and everything in between. And while we could go through literally hundreds of different automations and agent examples from this point forward, the fact is 99% of them are essentially just a combination of these 12 things. And through the first six parts of this NADN masterclass, you've actually learned how to do all of those. So now the question is no longer, do you have the foundational skills to build agents, but do you have the large high level frameworks to actually do it from scratch? And up until now, the answer to that has been no, but in this lesson, part number seven, that is what we're going to cover. We're going to go through my four step process to creating any AI workflow you want from scratch. It's the same thing I use when I build these things for clients. So then you can take the skills that we've been building on these last six lessons and actually apply them to your life. And so even though this lesson will be a little less hands on in terms of actually creating anything inside of NADN, I would argue it's the most important one that you really need to internalize because this cycle, this four step process that I'm going to give you is something you're going to apply to every single workflow you build here on out. So let's go through this four step cycle one by one. And I use the term cycle on purpose because this is something that's happening constantly as you build out your workflows. It's not just step one, step two, step three, step four, we're done. Every single part of the workflow, you're gonna be going through this loop. And so step one of this cycle is define success, which to me is creating a PRD, a product requirements document. So why is step one create a product requirements document? I thought we were trying to create an AI workflow. Well, what a PRD is gonna do for us is it's gonna allow us to put thoughts on paper that specifically describe what we are trying to build and what those features are. So let's use this AI lead generation automation as our example for today's lesson. Now, what this automation does is it finds leads, it enriches leads, creates custom messaging for the lead, and then dumps it all into Instantly AI, which is a platform that is used for cold email outreach. Now, when I first created this automation, when it became time for me to build this from scratch, do you think I knew all the features that I needed right away? Do you think I knew that, oh yeah, I was gonna specifically run Appify, I needed to parse the lead data afterwards, I needed to do company research in this manner? No, no, of course not, and neither are you. Off the bat, all you're gonna know is, yeah, I need to do a lead generation automation and probably enrich it. Like That's where you're gonna start and that's okay, but you need to flesh that out because if you just go into a blank canvas, right, and that's all you're starting with, you're gonna struggle and really you're just gonna take up a ton of time and we wanna eliminate that. And so that's where the PRD comes in and this is where you also lean very heavily on AI. You're gonna to go to Claude, Gemini, ChatGPT and you're gonna have it create this PRD for you. And the way that works is you're just gonna tell it what you're trying to build, that it's inside of NADN and you need to help kind of fleshing out the features. And what you're gonna get is something like this. Now, the actual document itself doesn't really matter. It doesn't really matter how it's formatted or anything. What you just need is you need success to find. I'm trying to create this, right, this automation, and it needs features A, B, and C. And so back to our cold outreach, what was that? The PRD was what I want to create in lead generation AI automation machine. But what are the features it needs? It needs some way to scrape data. That's what you see here, feature A. And then what's feature B? I need some way to enrich that data. That's what you see here. Feature C, I need to generate custom outreach messaging. And then feature D, I need a way to actually put it somewhere where I can do cold email outreach, right? And by breaking it down into individual features, you've now broken down your task into bite-sized chunks that you can actually handle, right? If I tell you to do all that at once, especially when you're new, you're gonna get overwhelmed. 
you're going to get confused and your workflow is going to fail. So the PRD becomes essential for you keeping your project organized and manageable. And so the more detailed your PRD is, the easier it's going to be for you to be able to solve the problems that you need to get through to actually create the workflow you want. And so that's step one to find success. What are we trying to build? Put the thoughts on paper, break it down into features, and those become your clear steps to success. All right, cool, Chase. We define success. That's neat. Everything's on paper, but I actually need to build at some point. So like what's step two? Well, step two is can we steal it? Right. And that's kind of tongue in cheek, but is what you're trying to solve that unique and has it been done before? So are we really trying to steal someone's template? No, but what you are trying to do is you are going to go online and you're going to do some searching to see how other people have tried to solve your problem. So for our lead generation automation example, what I would do is I would go to perplexity. That's my personal favorite. And I would just put in lead generation automation and it end. And what's going to come back? It's going to come back with Reddit posts. It's going to come back with actual links to N8N and, and probably some YouTube videos. Now, your use case is probably a little more unique than just a generic lead generation automation, and you won't find something that's a one to one fit. That's OK, because guess what? You are never going to find a one on one fit for your exact situation. What we're trying to find is just something that can get us to like 50 percent. If we have a 50 percent solution out there, that's way better than starting from scratch. And so I just go to perplexity and I just start clicking on some links, right? Like, so here's one automated lead management. Now, is this what I wanted? Did I want HubSpot? No, but I would continue going down this rabbit hole and trying to see what other people have done, right? Because if nothing else, it's going to give me inspiration because when you're new as well, you haven't seen all the different ways you can kind of like play with data or all the different you know, modules out there that may be able to help you in your specific issues. Because I can guarantee you someone has tried to do something within your realm of automation, right? And so like, don't try to reinvent the wheel if you don't have to. When I created this one, I was able to find like a 40, 50% solution. It essentially had, it gave me this Apollo URL generator idea. It didn't have the parcel lead data. It didn't have the company research. It didn't have the instantly but it had the Apollo URL generator and I hadn't even thought of doing that before and it ended up working great for me. And so that's step number two. Can we steal it? Is there something online that we can use for inspo? So we've done step one, we created our PRD. We've done step two, we've tried to see if anyone else has anything similar out there online that we can use. And then step three, it's time to finally put pen to proverbial paper and begin iterating. Now, at this point, we are going to go back to our PRD, right? Remember all those features that we talked about? Well, now we're going to go feature by feature and begin executing, right? You see right here in this one, data extraction, Apollo via Abify. Well, that would be our first feature. And that's kind of what you see here in this example. The first part of all of this is just getting data from Apollo via Abify. And if you have no idea what any of those words mean, all I'm trying to do is get data on leads, right? Names, emails, all that stuff, right? Something to start with. That's the first feature I need to accomplish. I can't be worried about doing enriching or instantly or anything else yet. I'm hyper-focused on step one because it also allows me to just test step one. We have to take it one step at a time. And this probably seems super obvious to you, right? Wow, take it one step at a time. But I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I can't I could have a whole video of people who like come to me with their issues, with their workflows, because they're trying to create something that's 10 times more complicated than this. They have no experience inside of N8N and they just try to do too much at once. Like you have to keep it simple, right? Simple is always better. And so we're just going to begin iterating. We're going to begin testing. We're going to begin building, which brings us into step number four, which is the most important step. And that's troubleshooting. Now let's talk about troubleshooting because troubleshooting goes hand in hand with a popular term you've probably heard lately, and that's context engineering. Now I'm about to give you the keys to the kingdom here when it comes to troubleshooting, because most people have no clue what they're doing with troubleshooting and they don't do it enough, right? You should have a constant running conversation with AI when you're trying to do things like I'm going to go over here and try to find like a recent thing I worked on, right? Like I, I, I could keep scrolling here for probably like, 30 minutes. Like this was a recent build I did for a client. It was a rag agent and it wasn't even particularly complicated, but I am constantly having back and forth with AI when I'm trying to do these builds, anything, any issue I've run into, I'm bringing it to AI. I'm troubleshooting, right? It is your partner. It is your co-pilot. And that's how you have to treat it, right? Again, this is how much I'm doing it for one agent, for one build. I do this for a living. I've done this way more than you. Yours should look just like this. Constant, constant, constant back and forth. Now, 
How does that back and forth go? How do I give it context? How do I troubleshoot? Here's how you do it, right? So we're working on this. And let's say we get an error. Let's say I had an error with the Apollo URL generator, OK? Here's what's going to happen. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my AI choice, which is Gemini for me. And then I am going to give it all of the code for that workflow. Now, the way you do that is you come up here to the top right, you see these three dots, you're going to hit download. And then you're going to get a .json file inside of your downloads folder. Then I'm going to go to Gemini for me, and I'm going to dunk that code in there, right? It's called skeleton. It's a different one, just as an example. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to give it big picture context. What's big picture context? That's me telling the AI, this is the workflow. This is what I'm trying to do with it. Guess what you could also give it? You could give it your PRD, right? That's all the context it really needs. You just gave it everything, right? So here's the code. Here's what I'm trying to solve. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to give it tactical context. So small picture, where is my error and what does it look like? So if my error was here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take a screenshot of this picture, right, of the module itself. I'm then going to put that into AI, and then I'm going to give it context as well. Here's what the error looks like. Here's what the error is saying. And here's when I'm seeing it, right? So now it knows what I'm trying to do big picture. It knows what the error is small picture. And what it's going to give me back is some sort of troubleshooting steps. And if you're lucky, the first steps it's going to give you are going to work just fine and your problem will be solved and you're on your way. If not, you're just going to repeat the process. Now, once you give it big picture context once, you don't need to continue doing that, but continue going into whatever module is giving you issues, giving it a screenshot, updating the context, telling it, hey, the last uh, troubleshooting step that you gave me didn't work, and here's why. And that is how you troubleshoot. And I guarantee you, if you run that cycle enough times, that it won't be that many, you're going to be able to solve your problem. And once you've solved your problem for feature number one, guess what time it is? It's time to repeat the whole cycle for feature number two. So what are you going to do? You're going to define success. You already did that with the PRD. Can you steal it? Has anyone tried to do what you're doing in feature number two before? Go on perplexity, see if someone has. Iterate, begin building. Four, troubleshoot till it works. Repeat, repeat, repeat. You just repeat this cycle over and over, right? This is all you're doing the whole time. And it doesn't stop. You just keep doing this till you have solved your problem. And if this seems relatively simple, it's because it is. Right? There's nothing magic about creating these AI systems from scratch, truly. But you do need some sort of framework to keep you honest and keep you on track so you don't get lost in the weeds and have to start all over because your thing's so busted. And so if you're disciplined enough to stick with that framework, I guarantee you, you can create any sort of AI workflow you want with the skills you already have because there's nothing out there that you really don't have the skills to already create. Right? APIs, HTTP requests, proper system prompts, tool usage, RAG, vector databases, all that. We've covered it. You know how to do it. You just don't know how to apply it yet. And this framework is going to give you sort of your left and right limits to create whatever you need to. And so I would tell you, take a screenshot of this, commit this to memory, practice it, because this is your golden ticket to creating any AI workflow you want. And it's why I think this lesson is the most important one in this entire masterclass, right? Because we've learned the tools, we've learned the baseline foundations, and now you have a way to apply it. So that's where I'm going to leave you at the end of part seven. And I've been saying it over and over again in this lesson, and I truly mean it. You really do have the skills now to build any sort of AI workflow you want. You just now need the practice. Now, we still have one more part in this masterclass series, and that's going to be part eight. And that's where I'm going to kind of go into the business side of this, right? What are your options for sourcing clients? How do we do pricing? How do we implement these things, right? A lot of the stuff that everyone kind of a gloss over, it doesn't tell you at all. We're going to cover that in lesson eight. So lastly, make sure you check out my school. There's links to that below if you want to get more guides and resources of like how to build and use these AI agents. And I'll see you in part eight.